Hello reader. Thank you for joining us. This is the Christian Readers Community Podcast. On this podcast, we will be discussing with fellow readers and authors. You will never lack for good conversations and recommendations of Christian books. If you're a lover of literary works, fiction and non-fiction, then you have made the right stop here. Thank you for joining us again and I hope you listen to every podcast that we get up to tell for you. Thank you. Welcome to the Christian Readers Community. Thank you so much everyone who is listening to us right now. I'm your host and my name is Faith. If this is your first time of listening to us, I do hope you'd enjoy this episode. And do feel free to check out other episodes that we've published. And um, if this is your if this is not your first time, thank you for coming back. And uh, I do hope you'd enjoy this one like you did the previous ones. Now I have like I, you know, as usual, I'm not alone. I came, but today I came with an author. She's um, someone I've been following her works, you know, reading her stories on this platform called Wattpad. So she last year she decided to move from 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 that platform to Amazon. And when I read this book that she published last year, I I told myself that, you know, I'm definitely going to invite her to come talk to us about this book. And the title, the title is very, it's catchy. The title is, is amazing. The title of this book is amazing. But let me start first by introducing this author, speaking to us all the way from the United States. And her name is Kim Griffin. Welcome to the show, Kim. Hi. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah, happy new year to you. <laughs> happy new year. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so Kim, how is how is the weather this time of the year in the United States? Um, well, I am a little bit south of central United States and it's cold. Um we had some snow on some of the mountains close by, but I have not received any. Um, but it's just cold. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, then, well, let's say just give it a couple of months and the winter will be over. <laughs> yes. Or sometimes in the part of Tennessee where I live, um, sometimes even in the winter we'll get kind of warm days. So wow. um, for those, yeah, we not warm as in you can wear shorts and things, but, but warm compared to the freezing cold <laughs> <laughs> yeah right yeah, so, okay. thank you so much Kim and yeah like I said earlier you would <laughs> it will soon get to to spring and you you leave behind all the cold and I guess mm-hmm. it will make you feel better <laughs> yeah I do like the warmer weather <laughs> Uh-huh. So um, you you published this book last year, and the title yes. when I saw it, I was like, okay, I, I was so eager to read this book. I was like, okay, um, I think I'll, I I am going to reach out to you. And when I did, thank God, I was among those who who got um, an advanced copy of this book and the title is not quite mr darcy then i read the the story description and i ha- i had to ask okay who is mr Dar- who is mr darcy because i've been hearing that name and um i know it's a fictional character from a novel written by a very popular author who was probably during in the 80s um, no, no, not the 80s, not in the 20th or the 19th century. So it was when I was reading the book that I announced uh, that, okay, this um, Mr. Darcy was a character in Jane Austen's book. So you're here to talk to us about not quite Mr. Darcy. Okay. First off, tell us about this book. Give us a little um, 
description about this book. Okay. Um, so, yeah, th- back to the name, though. So it comes from um, yeah Jane Austen's uh, Pride and Prejudice, which is probably her most famous book about among romance readers. And so it was written, I think, in the late 1700s, early 1800s. And um, so that's called the Regency period. But uh, over and over, like romance readers, they'll refer to Mr. Darcy. Oh, I'm looking for my Mr. Darcy. So that's kind of where the name came from. And I, and I do love um, Jane Austen's books, and I, I always really enjoyed it them. But one thing I always thought um, when I was reading her books was I wish there was like talk about Jesus um, in them like it pointed people to Christ and I think that a lot of times when I read books that aren't Christian books is I wish they would point people to Christ like when things go well in their lives I wish they would give the glory to God so my book not quite Mr. Darcy it, it kind of stems from that um, in that the fact that romance readers always think, oh, Mr. Darcy, he's the perfect ideal man. He's the, the type of man that I need. And um, the reality is that, that no man is perfect. Um, and we know that as Christians, that nobody is perfect. And yeah. so, um, especially as I've gotten older and I've been married a number of years, you know, I've seen like even my husband who I love and we've been married for 31 years, um, he's not perfect and, um, nor was he when we were dating. And so it kind of goes along with that. And also, um, you know, as I've gotten older and some of our friends, um, their marriages have failed or, you know, they haven't made it through the hard times and things like that. And so that was kind of in the back of my mind. And so in my book, this young lady, um, and I don't want to give too many details. You've read it. So I like to have lots of surprises in my books. Um, but at the beginning, you do realize pretty quickly that her husband died and she's still yeah. young. And yeah. um, so that's that's not a big secret. She's still young. She's from um, she's from the South uh, in the U.S. like I am. And, uh, but she's always wanted to go travel and always wanted to go to England to the stories that, um, you know, to the places where Jane Austen wrote her stories. And so she, um, ends up getting a job. She's a nurse and she gets a job in, um, on the coast of England, taking care of a dementia patient, an older woman, um, who has dementia and um, she's going to be a live-in nurse for this woman and so um, so there's that she's traveling um, so she already has her back issues of her husband dying but as the story goes on you find out more about that relationship and um, so she's not really looking for a relationship but uh, as often happens in our lives God puts things in our lives that um that we don't expect and twists and turns that we don't expect. So, um, in this book, I, I tried to have, um, our, the main character starts off. She believes she's a Christian and uh, I don't want to say too much because there's a lot that happens. Yeah. Um, but that also came just from my own personal experience, just, getting to know people. Um, I also do ministry work and I lead women's Bible studies and, um, and do mission type things. And through the years, you just learn a lot of times people think that they're Christians, but, uh, maybe Christianity to them is just the fact that they go to church periodically or the fact that, um, if they were infant baptized, they, they might confuse that and think that that means that they're a Christian. And um, so uh, so I'm coming from that aspect. Like I want people to, to see like what real Christianity is. And I tried to portray that through Kate's life and the lives of some of the others that she intersects with. But um, Kate doesn't have an easy life and uh, things keep hitting her that are very hard and difficult and uh, I think that's real life for all of us sometimes sometimes things go smoothly 
um, and sometimes even for Christians, really hard and difficult things hit us and uh, how our relationship with God can really affect how we handle those things. Um, We can lean into our relationship with God and grow in our relationship with God, um, or we can get angry at God and turn away from Him. And so I tried to give lots of opportunities for her new faith to um, be tested in that way in this book. And um, so there's a lot of that. This book is also really personal to me. I have that the dementia patient that she works with and um, the dementia patient, even though she's in and out of being coherent about things, she has some great wisdom for Kate. And um, that's personal to me because my mom had Alzheimer's for 14 and a half years before she died. And, um, and she was, she was very similar. She, I was close to her. She was a super strong Christian. Um, and, and especially earlier on as she was experienced the dementia from the Alzheimer's, she would, you know, sometimes have really good pieces of wisdom for me, but then other times things that she said didn't make sense or, um, you know, she just couldn't do that. And it was a hard thing to go through. And, um, I wrote this after she had died, so I think it was also kind of a way for me to let some of that go. I I did dedicate this book to her because she was a woman of faith, and um, so that, that was a special thing to me. So yeah, there are a lot of different things that go into this book, but it's, it's a young woman's journey um, of faith, basically learning who God really is and learning that God wants a relationship with us, not just to be somebody we talk about or, um, he's not somebody that's far away from us, but he's somebody that wants to be close and intricately involved in our lives. And so she learns that and she learns what it means to be a real Christian through that. And then there, there are other side characters who are also interacting and learning about their faith and that type of thing. And Mm. yeah, that's my book. Mm. Wow. You know, I, I, I read your book cover to cover and I saw the dedication and I guess you, you did dedicate that book to your mom, your late mom. And I can't imagine what you went through. I can't imagine. Um, I've never been with someone with dementia or um, Alzheimer's. So I can't even imagine how difficult that period was for you or for anyone who has or is currently going through that experience and uh, it was really a wonder an emotional book and emo- is strong the, the the emotions in in, in the, the emotion i experienced with this book was very strong and um, this leads me to my next question although i think you may have answered part of it when did this story come to your mind that you should um write this story what motivated yeah. This story, um, it kind of came to me over time. Um, first, I think the first thing that came to my mind was um, that I did want to write a story of a, of a woman who went to England and um, worked with a dementia patient. And uh, I, I did also mention earlier how um, I've seen like other relationships, other marriages fall apart or have issues and how they've had to work through those or how they haven't worked through those. And so, um, that just kept hitting me. And so, um, that kind of determined where I wanted to go with her relationship with her husband who passed away and, um, and create that backstory for her. So they, those things kind of all came together um, and pushed the story forward. And uh, since it was going to be my first official published book, 
I wanted it to have some kind of tie-in to uh, Jane Austen because, like I said, I really do love her works. And so I thought it would be fun to um, to tie that in. And um, because also I was trying to convey the idea that, you know, we, we're human and um, that perfect man is not really going to be perfect. Um, I, I thought that not quite Mr. Darcy was was the perfect name. Hmm. So um, let's talk about the, the location where you where this book was um, set in you you live in the united states but you wrote a book that most part of it was set in the in england and um that goes you know writing about a different location from where you live is a little it's, it's not just a little it's tedious it's a little hard because you'd have to do do researches to know about the that environment learn their mannerisms the location the way things looked like and also we want to come to the research aspect of this book what how you know what you did and you know how challenging was it knowing that you were going to write a story set in England. Did you have to travel? Because in some cases, I've seen authors that travel all the way, you know, from you know, they, they to travel from one location to that particular location that they want um, to write about, that they want to feature in their books. So how did it? How did you go about this one? Because England and the United States, they are on two different continents. So how did you go about doing this one? Because you you featured both the United States and England. And when you were in the United States, I felt the shift. When you were writing and um, the characters returned to England, I felt the shift as well. So I guess it was very, from what I've, I saw, I think everything was, was clear. The difference were, were there. So how did you go about this? How did you pull it off? Okay. Um, yeah, it was it was a little bit complex, and um, I was a little bit intimidated going into it. Um, so, the main character Kate, she's from Memphis, which is where I am from. So that was a familiar place, although I, I haven't lived there. That's not been my hometown for a while, um, but I still go back to visit family. So that was that part was pretty easy, but. Um, then England, and then there's even just a little weekend. She goes to Paris. Um, those I drew. From, yes, Paris. Yeah, yeah. I drew from a trip that my that I took with my husband and my kids um, some years back, uh, maybe 2016, and uh, we went to London, um, and then we took a train out to Dover, just like Kate does at the very beginning of the story. She takes a train from, she flies into London and takes a train out to Dover. And um, so I was able to kind of recall my feelings on that, because that was, you know, a first experience for me. And um, and so, like, we, we had spent some time out in Dover, um, like a little day trip. So I was a little bit familiar with that. Um, also, um, on that tr- same trip, we took a train from London um, and we went through the channel to Paris. So for that trip, I was able to um, recall that. And then we have since had gone to Paris another time, but had not gone back to London. So, um, so I had a little bit of a framework of personal experience um, knowing what it felt like going and having all those things fresh and new. Um, but the internet is, I'm so thankful. I couldn't have done this years ago without the internet. Um, because, you know, I was able to research like what temperature it should be at certain times of year. And, um, and, you know, I was able, even able to bring up, um, the Google earth and like look visually at the landscape and the buildings you can get 3Ds of the buildings, which is really amazing. And um, since I have a background in interior design and architecture, that interests me as well. So I was able to, to, to get a really rich idea. Like I would, um, you can stick your little person on the Google Earth 
map, you can sticker your person on a road and then get a 3D image and you can walk down the road. And so I did that in a number of places that she visited in the book. So I could actually see like, what do these buildings look like in 3D? And um, what do these streets look like when you're walking down? Because I wanted to, you know, to, I wanted it to feel real. And um, so that was a lot of fun. And, uh, but it, yeah, it was a little bit intimidating. And I did a lot of research trying to find out like some phrases that they would use um, in England. And um, I did have, when I sent out for my initial beta readers, one of them had a good friend who is from England. And so she would message her for me about some certain things and say, hey, I don't think they would say it exactly this way. This is what they would say. And so that was helpful. And um, it may not be, you know, it's I'm sure not 100% accurate. Somebody that's from there probably goes, oh, it would be a little bit different here or there. But um, but I tried to mm-hmm. do the best to, to give the feel. Yes. You know, I... <laughs> I just remembered something and it's from another book I read. And in this book, I, I, I read the author's note as well. And so this author was, you know, kind of acknowledging. You know, when I read the acknowledgement section, this person was acknowledging the some Nigerians that um, helped him out. Because um, actually, in, I mean, I'm a Nigerian living in Nigeria currently. And... <clears throat> This book I read, it was authored by an American. So he featured both America, Europe, um, Jerusalem, and Nigeria. Okay, Jerusalem Jerusalem was was actually featured in the second book in this series. So uh, when the person was writing about Nigeria, I read so many accurate stuff about the the country and I was like oh this is beautiful but the person actually did something he he, he said that um, Nigeria's prime minister then I smiled when I read that place because we don't actually use the word prime minister here yeah. <laughs> so we use, yeah, so we, use, we, we actually have a president not a prime minister but every other thing was really cool especially when he featured where I live I stay in Port Harcourt, River State, Nigeria. And it was really wonderful, you know, reading about those familiar places, those places I've worked, I've, um, you know, worked. I saw those places in, in the book and it was really, really wonderful. And he was also applauding Google Earth and, you know, researches and, you know, questions asked, um, questions he asked friends. So that's why when you said, when you said that you were sure you didn't get it so, you know, 100% yes. accurately. <laughs> Yeah, that was why that book came to mind. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's it can be hard. And yeah, you just do your best when you're trying to do that. And in fact, my yeah. second writing right now <laughs> is a part of that series. And it's also in England. So yeah, I'm, I still write it with trepidation that there's <laughs> something that maybe doesn't make sense to a person that lives there. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and you know one thing you also said was that it was it was quite intimidating. <laughs> that was yeah. what. <laughs> yeah, that one really got me. It got me cracking. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. 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 Let's um, shift a little bit about you as the author. You, this is not your first time writing. So when did you decide? Because you just you just you are into interior designing. Now, when did you when did you decide that you you were going to start writing? When did you when did you feel that push, that calling, that move to write? Um. Yeah. So what motivated yeah. it as well? It's been maybe about six years now, but uh, so yeah, my background, my training is interior design and architecture, Um, but then I found myself as I um, got married and had kids, I wanted to stay home, and I thought I would go back and do interior design and architecture, and I ended up homeschooling them, Um, so I was home all the time and didn't really have time to do much other than just you know, help out friends here and there. And um, 
but I have four kids and my oldest two, they were graduating and um, I was having more and more time at home. And then my youngest, there was kind of a gap. My youngest is adopted from Haiti. And um, so there was a, a six year school gap between my youngest um, and then my um, third child. And so uh, my third son, he was starting to be gone a lot as well, taking some college classes while he was finishing up high school. And I, But I still had to stay home for my youngest to be here with him and answer his questions. And I, I um, got back into reading. I've always loved reading a lot. I never saw myself as a writer, even though when I was young, I did do some writing things. Um, but I just never, I went into interior design instead. And um, so, uh, but I was reading more and more. I, you'd mentioned Wattpad earlier. I discovered Wattpad and I was like, oh, this is really cool. You know, free books and you can see what people are writing. Um, and you, as you probably also noticed in Wattpad, a lot of the romance books tend to have smut on Wattpad. There aren't as many um, clean romance and, and especially not as much with Christian romance. And yes. So that was disappointing. And um, and also, like, seeing the variety of things that people wrote, I, it, I was like, I think I could do this because I realized in my mind I kept rewriting stories, <laughs> like, to put mm -hmm. faith in them or to um, make them happen differently. And so I kept doing that, and I was like, I think I could do that. And so um, since I had more time than I had in the past, I... Um, I started doing that instead of just reading all the time. I, I thought, well, I could write some of these stories that are popping out of my head. And so I started writing and um, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun. Wow. It was a wow. good outlet. And um, so then I just, uh, how it led to me actually writing to publish, um, one of the people that I followed, or actually I think it was a couple of that were Christians, I noticed they had Instagram accounts um, for their writing, and uh, so and I had an Instagram account because I had had that to follow my daughter and you know that kind of thing, and so I started checking that out, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then more and more, they were talking about how they were indie publishing their books, like publishing themselves through Amazon and other outlets, and um, by uh, that point I had written three uh, fiction books and then I wrote my um, Christmas Advent devotional and so I I was starting to think I, I was feeling like on Wattpad I had kind of reached all the people that I could but I still wanted to reach people I, I wanted it to be a ministry that was the other thing I, um, I should mention about what drew me into writing was I thought this could really be a ministry. I mean, you're, you're in Africa. And so, um, and I, I'm very involved in women's ministry and missions. Um, I've led Bible studies for a number of years, but I've not been able to go on many mission trips, uh, because I've had kids at home. Um, whereas a lot of the people I support and pray for, they go all over the world, um, doing missions and, so I thought, you know, this would be a really neat way that I could do missions, <laughs> you know, writing, and then people around the world can read. And mm -hmm. I'm drawn to God that way. And so that was another draw. So then when, um, so all through the time, my desire has been to be able to reach people. So then when I discovered, oh, there's, you know, other outlets that I could also use to maybe reach more people. And so that's what drew me into actually publishing it officially or publishing a book officially. Um, and so it was kind of one thing led to another. And I was like, I guess I could do that. And um, I just kept trying things and it came together and um, and I published a book. And I was so, yeah, it, it was uh, it wasn't. I mean, it, it wasn't, obviously, I, I did it. Um, it wasn't impossible, but there were a lot of steps involved that took, so it took, this last book took me longer than my books on Wattpad did to write because I kept having to and figure out how to do things, how to, um, I created a website and how to, um, you know, what kind of process I needed to go through to get it edited and to get a professional um 
uh, cover done, and those types of things that um, that kind of slowed me down from what I had done on Wattpad. Yeah, because I didn't see um, <clears throat> after your third story, I didn't see another one from you. I was expecting that okay, maybe you were preparing writing writing down in a writing um putting down the out- outline of your story but after i think it was almost a year uh, before you finally came up and i had i was surprised i was like okay because i knew one of the reasons why i follow your works on wattpad is because of how fast you update your stories you oh. were yeah you were very good with you know you when you when you started a story i think you completed it within a space of three months and it was really something to watch sometimes i re- i i i silently envied you wanted to ask you how you did it but i, I think i even did one of those times i was interacting with you um in one of our um, private chats on what part and when i when i when you finally came back i was like oh thank god because i thought you'd ha- you'd actually left you know um permanently from what part but i'm glad i'm glad when you finally explained why you've why you've not been active on that platform i was like okay Okay, this is nice this is very very nice and i'm so happy that you know we've seen this book published and it was really really wonderful like i said earlier now um b- without wasting much time again because we don't have much time i would like to ask you this fine um this question um between writing editing publishing researching everything every step you took with writing and publishing this book every step you took for the entire publication what would you say was the most challenging and what would you say was the would was the most rewarding for you oh um the most challenging was was probably the editing um and and actually, um, the, I, so I did my own editing, and then I went through um, what is called having beta readers read. And so that's um, sending it out to some early readers, just a handful of readers, and they give feedback on it. And um, I, with this particular book, some, I knew something was not quite what it needed to be to go out in the world. Um, And it kept bugging me. And so then waiting on that response from those people. And so, and, and you have to weed out like some, some comments that people will make might be just their personal preference, but some might be really useful tools that would help. Um, And so when I finally compiled all that information together and, and realized the changes I need to make, needed to make but I at that point I had an editor lined up and so I was in a time crunch and I had to get all those changes made really quickly I had had like one maybe one week to get them changed and um and it was pretty daunting because there were some some major things I had to to change like I had to read through so much of it and um in order to make sure I didn't miss anything that needed to be changed and so that was a little bit daunting um so that was probably the most challenging getting it um like from my words and then having people review it making changes and that part of the end that was the most challenging for me um I guess the most rewarding was um I would say when I uploaded it onto Kindle to be um put out as a print book and as a ebook that was like I've done it it's on there and it just <laughs> yeah it was just that was really um exciting and strange that was neat and then also that I ordered like a a author's copy um like where you just for you to look it over and my first paperback copy that I received that was really cool too but I, I really think that the most exciting was just that uploading <laughs> seeing it there on kindle like oh there's my book people can buy it now <laughs> so. yeah it's really wonderful wow i'm glad i'm happy yes it's really really beautiful because when you're writing editing it looks like hard work and when you finally publish you're like oh 
dream come true i love this <laughs> it's finally out there and it's it's a beautiful thing now um did you plan to write more or yeah you think um yeah right now i'm writing another book like i mentioned it, and it's going to actually so not quite mr darcy is going to end up being the first of a series and um most of the books will be standalone um but this book that I'm writing right now, so I'm probably about a third of the way through, and the main character is a new character, but she's friends with Kate, and then there's also a lot of, there are several other characters that you'll see from Not Quite Mr. Darcy, but again, you don't have to read that book, um, Not Quite Mr. Darcy, to read this new one, and I can't say the name of it yet, because I, I still haven't sure. all of sure. um, I, sending out emails and with hints it's but it's not quite and then there's a name at the end which is another one of the heroes from a Jane Austen book so um so your listeners can guess of what that might be um so this series all of them are going to be not quite and then it'll it'll be a name from Ooh, wow and I have another one, at least one more in mind, maybe two more after that. Um, and then I've got, um, I do the ones, two that I wrote on Wattpad, my last two that I wrote on Wattpad, I would like to edit them and make them a little bit more professional and put them out as well. And then I've got, um, I've got some other ideas as well. So it's just a matter of time though, because like I did mention, I, um, I lead women's Bible studies, um, I have uh, a lot of other ministry work that I do, and um, and I'm a, I'm a new grandmother. I have a little seven-month-old granddaughter. So just balancing all those th- things will determine how much I can get done. Yay! Congratulations, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My name is going to be Gigi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Is that is that is that from is that from any um, language? No. <laughs> okay, it's um, G I G I. So uh, some people I have heard use G G, but um, but I was thinking because my last name is Griffin, so grandmother Griffin. That's a G and a G. So mm-hmm. I'm not ready to be called grandmother yet. So um, <laughs> I still feel young at heart. So <laughs> G G. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gigi. Thank you. Thank congratulations, Gigi. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, so before we go, um could you read an excerpt? Let's say say a chapter from the book. It's just like a teaser for those who are listening. Okay. Um yes. So I will I'm going to I'll just start with chapter 1 because if I get in too far, like I said, there's a lot of twists and turns in the book and I don't want to mm-hmm. give any. <laughs> so, um, and also I will say, so the very first line of my book is kind of a, a change in the quote that Pride and Prejudice is the first line of Pride and Prejudice, but I changed it a little bit. So for your readers, if they want to look up Pride and Prejudice, the first line, they'll recognize this. Okay, so this is chapter one. It is a truth universally acknowledged that Mr. Darcy does not exist. Taking a deep breath, Kate glanced at her phone. 15 minutes of her train trip from St. Pancreas Station in London to Dover Priory Station remained. Her eyes drifted to the bright green rolling hills out the window as her thoughts wandered. Moving to a country on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean seemed so much more romantic at the age of 14 when Kate and her best friend Jennifer first started making plans for their future. Those plans included visiting England to see the places enshrined in Jane Austen's book to find their very own Mr. Darcy's. But as often happens, life intervened. At 29, Kate was just now realizing that dream, minus the search for Mr. Darcy and the best friend, co traveler Now that she was a grown woman with experience beyond her years, she knew better than to waste time searching for the non-existent Mr. Darcy. 
As for Jennifer, it wasn't like her friend abandoned her. Jennifer was now married, pregnant, and mother to three-year-old Emma. Moving them from Memphis, Tennessee to England wasn't practical. So much for teenage plans. Kate frowned, remembering that she wouldn't even be here herself if it weren't for the death of her husband, Mark, nine months earlier. Biting her lip, she refused to let tears escape and focused again on the quickly changing scenery outside of the train. This was supposed to be a time of refreshment and renewal, not a time to be stuck in her head. She was finally experiencing things she had long thought were out of reach. This will be good, she silently assured herself, a chance to leave behind the pain. If only she could convince Jennifer that she wasn't here to find her true Mr. Darcy. Kate stifled a chuckle at the thought. Ever since high school, Jennifer had been intent on ensuring Kate had her Mr. Darcy. The first time Kate saw her then future husband walk into her high school French class as a new student, all the girls swooned. He was so tall and handsome. Later that year, when Mark and Kate started dating, Jennifer insisted he was Kate's very own Mr. Darcy. Tall, dark, handsome, and from a very wealthy family. He even seemed a bit snobbish at first, though that quickly passed once he felt comfortable at the school. Kate always said that Mark was not quite Mr. Darcy because he didn't have the accent. Now it was very clear the two of them wouldn't get the happy happily ever after Jane Austen intended for her characters. Jennifer assured Kate that her Darcy was still out there somewhere, and with the relocation, she would finally find him, accent and all. A sad smile emerged as she remembered those happy, carefree high school days, a sharp contrast to her current reality. And there it was again, that ever-present pain trying to rise to the surface. Nine months of counseling couldn't make it go away. Perhaps an ocean of distance could. The murmurs surrounding passengers drew her back to the moment and brought a small smile to her face. She wondered if she would ever get used to the various British accents. As Kate's gaze moved from passenger to passenger, no one gave her the sad eyes, and it was blissfully freeing to be an ocean away from everyone who knew, or at least thought they knew, of her pain. She told her new employer, Tracy, about her husband's death, but had requested that she keep it to herself. This was Kate's chance to get away from the constant reminders of what she'd lost. Thankfully, her soon-to-be patient was unaware, unaware of Mark's death, and Kate planned to keep it that way. Is there a stop there? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, um... This book, I, like I said before, I read it and it's full of mysteries, mysteries and even the late husband didn't, you know, escape from it and not even, not even the woman with dementia, you know, everybody in this book, there was just this mystery that was tied to, there's this mystery that was tied to everyone, every character in this book. And when you read it, you would follow all the characters and not quite Mr. Darcy to dig them out, keep digging them out until the last. And there was something, there was a line I love so much. And when I read it, I was like, oh, beautiful. This is, this is, this is wonderful. And that reason is tied to the title of this book, Not Quite Mr. Darcy. I'm not going to give it away. I'm not going to say that that line that was <laughs> intriguing to me because okay. it's almost at the last line. Yeah. It's almost, I think, at the last chapter of the book. Yes. So that the last, cha- was it the last or second to the last chapter of the so book? Second to the last. I think I know uh-huh. what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I read it, I was like, Woo! <laughs> I can't believe this. I can't believe this. You know, I was like, what a wonderful line. What a beautiful line. Then I was like, okay, no problem. So if you should like to know what that line is, you should go and get this book from Amazon and you'd read it, you understand it. And you, I'm sure when you get to that line, you say, okay, this is the line Faith was talking about. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's it, everyone. Um, before we go, Kim, is there 
any um, means of contact that you like. Let's say if someone wants to get in touch, follow up, and um, let's say follow up for the next and uh, keep tab to see when you release your next book. How would you be able to do that? Um, so as I mentioned earlier, I created a website and it is kimgriffin.org. So K-I-M-G-R-I-F-F, that's in frog, I-N dot org, O-R-G. And you can go on there and there's um, a place where it says con- uh, to contact me and um, you can send, you know, put in your email and your name and a message and it will send that to my email so you can do that and also through that same website you can sign up for my newsletter and with that um, I I put in updates on my writing Um, so you mentioned like you got to do an advanced reader copy Um, my the people that read my newsletter they're going to be the first people that I announce that I need um, ARC readers for advanced reader copies and so so they'll get that opportunity first to um, sign up to read that and they'll they'll get those early copies and um, on my newsletters that I've been sending out I try to do like a little Bible study it attaches to my blog um, just updates on different things ministry opportunities um, and also ideas for for clean um, and or Christian books that they can read um, new authors I introduce them to new authors and things like that on the newsletter. So all that can be accessed through kimgriffin.org. Okay. All right. You've heard it. And um, if you also like to read more to know more about um, Kim, you just check the description um, section of this episode and you see her biography and her details the link to her website so you'll be able to click on it directly and it'll take you to her landing page to her home page where you'd be able to um, follow her on her social media and sign up to her newsletter if you want she's also on goodreads because I, I reviewed her book on that platform so she's there you can also follow her on that platform as well and you can also check her also follow her on on, you're also on, on Amazon, right? I mean, you have an author, author's page yes. there. Yeah, so, uh, so you can also follow her on Amazon. Uh, so everyone, thank you. Thank you so much, Kim, for coming. I'm very grateful you honored my invitation once again. And I hope that when I invite you, because I would definitely love to invite you when you have your next um, book released, I do hope that when I invite you, you'd be willing to um, you know, come again. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you too. Yes, everyone. Thank you so much for another wonderful episode. Thank you for listening. I do hope you keep coming back and coming back again. Once again, if you enjoyed this series and the previous ones, please do feel free to follow us so that you'd be updated when a new content is uploaded. And if you're already following, feel free to like our episode and share them to those whom, you know, share this book, share this episode in particular to every hopeless romantic out there because this book is your, it's your standard um, <laughs> romantic fiction, you know, but but it's, it's, it's the why it is even more beautiful than your average romantic fiction is because it's a Christian. It has it has the, the scriptures in it. Trust trust me. You know from 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 someone who has read this book, it gives you everything you you'd like to you you'd expect from a Christian romance, um, romantic fiction rather. So thank you everyone for joining us again. Until I come you, until I come your way again. I'm saying stay safe, stay blessed. And bye-bye.